Covenant Sealed Grace Chapel. Hallelujah. God bless you so much once again for joining us um, live at the Cross TV studios. Hallelujah. Um, this is your friend, your brother, your man of God coming to you with the word of God, covenant word of life. And I believe that your life will never be the same as you have joined us, as you have connected to hear the word of God and to pray as well. I want you to invite your friends, your loved ones, everybody from all over the world, share this video and let them come on to watch and hear the revelatory word of God that will elevate their lives above the circumstances. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for this day. I give you praise. I give you glory and honor for giving us the privilege to um, bring your word to your people. I speak through the camera to my lovely viewers. Let your hand touch them. The ones that need a touch, Lord, give those that need a change a change. And those that are oppressed, those that, that are suppressed, Lord, lose them and let them be free right now as your word that um, at your word that is coming to them. I speak in the name of Jesus to the atmosphere. We arrest any contrary powers of the enemy that has exalted themselves against your word today that is being brought to your people. And I humble and submit myself under your power anoint me afresh with divine utterance with fresh grace and fresh fire and oil to minister your word to your people holy spirit take over i give you praise i give you glory and let everybody say a big amen hallelujah today i want to share very briefly with you a very simple but yet powerful word of god which is entitled engaging the heavens through the altar of prayer engaging the heavens to the altar of prayer hallelujah and i want to read um to you from the book of daniel chapter 10 verse 1 to the verse 18 but i'll be jumping or skipping some of them because of time hallelujah but you can go back home or after the video you can search through the scriptures and study and pray with it and your life will not be the same again um, in the book of daniel chapter 10 verse 1 the bible said he said, in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a word was revealed to Daniel, who was called Bethesda, and the word was true, and it referred to great tribulation, which means conflict and wretchedness. And he understood the word and had understanding of the vision. Verse 2 says, in the days I, Daniel, was mourning for three whole weeks, then the verse 3 says that I ate no pleasant or desirable food, nor did any meat or wine come into my mouth. And I did not anoint myself at all for the full three weeks. And the verse 4 says, On the 24th day of the first month, as I was on the bank of the great river Hidekel, which is the Tigris, I lifted up my eyes and looked, verse 5, and behold a man clothed in linen, whose loins were guarded or girded with pure gold and uvas. Let me jump to the verse 10 because of time. The verse 10 says, And behold, a hand touched me, which set me unsteadily upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. Verse 11 says that, And the angel said to me, O Daniel, greatly beloved man, understand the words that I speak to you, and stand upright, for to you I now sent. I'm now sent, I beg your pardon. And while he was saying this word to me, I stood up trembling. Then he said to me, fear not, Daniel, for from that first day that you set your mind and heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I have come as a consequence of and in response 
to your words. Let God hear your words and your prayers in the name of Jesus. Verse 13 says, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me for 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief of the celestials, princes, came to help me. For I remained there with the kings of Persia. I pray for you and I speak into your life. Let God send help to you in the area of your struggling. Let God send help to you where you are trusting God for a change. Let God send help to you where you need help in the name of Jesus. In that ministry, I release the help of God to come to you right now. In that marriage, I release the help of God to come to you right now. In that financial issues, I release the help of God to come to you right now. In that health issues, that health challenges, I release the help of God to come to you right now. If you believe, shout, I receive it, and a big amen. And the verse 14 says, it says, Now I have come to make you understand what is to befall your people in the latter days. For the vision is for many days yet to come. And verse 15 says that when he had spoken to me according to these words, I turned my face towards the ground and was down. 16, and behold, one in the likeness of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke. I said to him, who stood before me, O oh my Lord, by reason of the vision, sorrows and pains have come upon me and I retain no strength. For how can my Lord's servant, who is so feeble, talk with this my Lord? For now no strength remains in me, nor is there any breath left in me. And the verse 18 says, Then there touched me again one whose appear, appearance was like that of a man, and he strengthened me. In Jesus' name, I speak once again and pray for you in the name of Jesus. Receive supernatural strength where you are failing, where you are weak, where you are down, where you have been set back, where you have been disappointed. Receive supernatural strength one more time in the mighty name of Jesus. I understand that people left you. I understand that you had a broken heart. I understand that things are not really working as they're supposed to work for you because of the, um, 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 the world um, financial recession that the economy is going through. But listen to me. If you can pray one more time and focus and trust God and hold on to, hold on to God's word, I promise you by the word of God, in the name of Jesus, supernatural strength will come to you. Supernatural help will come to you and solutions will manifest in your situation in Jesus name and so like I said earlier on the word I have for you tonight or today um, is engaging the heavens through the altar of prayer and ladies and gentlemen somebody who asks me man of God I know what prayer is yes of course you know what prayer is but listen to me some of you or somebody might be watching me right now and you feel very down and weak and it, it looks as if your prayer life is no more there you are tired you have thrown the towel I keep on saying something everywhere I go to people that what Ever prayer cannot do more prayer can do so if you think or you feel like you've prayed and nothing has happened pray again until the change take place and when the change come when the miracle comes keep on praying to maintain that blessing that God gave to you or will give to you through your prayer times ladies and gentlemen in these times and in this season you cannot do without prayer you cannot survive without prayer. If you have to succeed and survive on this earth, you need to pray any time and every day. And so, um, as we studied about um, Daniel, the account the Bible gave about this prophet called Daniel, the Bible spoke about three things over here. Daniel prayed. Daniel um, 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 had an encounter from an angel because there was an, um, a, um, an open heavens due to close evidence that Daniel have to keep on praying and on the 21st day the angel came with an answer and also talks about the heavens and talks about the books and understanding and so ladies and gentlemen what is the heavens the heavens is also referred to as a place where God operate from at the same time where powers also operate 
that is the heavens. So the heavens is the firmament above you and I, and also the heavens is referred to as a place where God operates from at the same time where powers also operate from. Hallelujah. Now, what is an altar? An altar is a sacred table set for spiritual purposes or for ritual. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give this um, very profound word to you that if you don't make a difference in life, you cannot be a reference in life. I know you are struggling. I know you are trusting God still concerning that miracle. I know people have set you back. They have caused you disappointment. I know people have wounded and hurt you. But listen to me. Shake yourself up again from the grounds where you you, 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 you failed or, or you thought you have been defeated. Shake yourself off and start up again and begin to engage into warfare prayers. Begin to engage into thanksgiving prayers. Begin to engage into worshipful prayers. And Listen to me, before you realize, even unexpectedly to you, God will show up and you will see the powerful, marvelous works of God at work in your life. Hallelujah. And so, if you want to make a difference in life, you have to pray. And also, until you make a difference in life, you cannot be a reference in life. Hallelujah. Now, if you don't make an impact in life, you will soon depart from life. The reason why most people are not being given attention to, the reason why most people don't, I mean, value much to people is because there is no impact that is being felt by the people from them. Listen to me. God has put something in you, in your spirit. God has invested something powerful in you. There is a gift in you. The grace of God is on you. There is an anointing on your life for everything in life. Once you're a believer, once you trust God, once you're a born-again Christian, you carry supernatural power that even your enemies cannot understand. Don't give up. Engage the heavens through the altar of prayer. Engage the heavens. And so, to go higher in life, you must maintain a standard in life. You must maintain a standard, the standard of your prayer life. It must be maintained. Don't pray today and tomorrow you don't pray. Don't be very bold today and tomorrow you are afraid. Don't start today all right and then begin to give up and say, okay, you have concluded on a situation. You don't care anymore what happens because of this and because of that. Listen to me. We are in the last days. We are in a time and in a season where you cannot live without prayer. Where prayer is very crucial and critical. Where prayer is very essential. You cannot live um, without prayer as a man of God, as a woman of God, as a child of God, as a daughter and a son of God, as a believer. You cannot live without prayer. Hallelujah. Now, God is still speaking, which you must put in your heart. Because the best of accommodation is not a house, it is the heart. Bible said, God, your heart with diligence, or uh, if I should paraphrase, and it said, Out of the heart are the issues of life. Out of the heart are the issues of life. God, your heart. God is speaking through His word. God is speaking even through the word I am preaching and teaching you right now. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to look at some few things, um, um, some 10 things about prayer about prayer but before we go into that you could see from the verse 1 of Daniel chapter 10 the Bible said in the third year of Cyrus king of Persia a word was revealed to Daniel who was called Bethesdashah and the word was true and it referred to a great tribulation conflict and wretchedness and he understood the word and had understanding of the vision ladies and gentlemen what you need to buttress your prayer is understanding. There are a lot of people who are praying and they are wondering why their prayers are not being answered. Listen to me. Prayer is very good. Prayer is important. You cannot survive without prayer, but it must have an understanding. You must have an understanding concerning the reason why you are praying. There must be an understanding. Because where there is no understanding, you remain under something. What rescues you? What gives you the upper hand? 
what gives you the foresight that makes your deliverance easy is when you have an understanding of what you are dealing with and what is dealing with you and what you have to deal with. Understanding is very, very important. And so he said, in the third year uh, of king of Persia, a word, was, a word was revealed to Daniel. Now, you need revelation in order to uh, move on or to continue in your journey to your destination. When you have revelation of what you are dealing with, 80% of that situation have been sorted out already by virtue of revelation. Revelation makes an elevation or your elevation easy for you. Once you have a revelation, your elevation becomes easy. Your upliftment becomes easy because revelation picks you from the ordinary grounds you used to operate from and on to a higher realm where you now know how best to deal with what you have been dealing with for so many years now that you do not know what to do about it much and this thing keeps on repeating itself. It has become chronic in your life. When there is revelation, you easily deal with it and that is it. I speak into your life in the name of Jesus. Receive supernatural revelation concerning that situation right now. The enemy is battling your life. The enemy is messing up with you. The enemy is causing you to go through a lot of things. You even go to bed. You sleep. You don't understand. You wake up. You don't remember the dreams. And you're wondering what is going on. From today, I release the spirit of revelation to be infused into your spirit in the name of Jesus. From today, I speak into your ministry. Let God give you that revelation that to catapult your ministry to the next level of greatness. I speak into your marriage. Let the Holy Spirit give you a revelation that will cause you to save your home. I speak into your life. Let God give you a revelation that will cause you to be a champion in the affairs of men, in the, in the realm of life. In the name of Jesus, receive revelation. Say a big amen. Hallelujah. And so the Bible said, in the verse 2, it said, In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three or weeks, which means that Daniel began to fast. Daniel began to fast. He began to fast and pray. He ate no food, um, no meat touched his mouth. Another version said, He did not even bath nor pomade his body. He was fully concentrated. He was fully focused on the situation that if the situation doesn't change, even though what God has said about his life, about the situation, um, I'm concerning the release of the people of God, even though it is true, until he enter into certain dimensions of prayer by engaging the heavens, that which God has said that is true, might end up not coming to pass. You might be watching me right now. You are wondering, the prophetic word that was given to me, is it really true? They told me I'm going to be a man of God. They told me I'm going to be rich. They told me I'm going to be great. They told me I'm going to be this and that. But yes, still, 10 years now, 5 years now, 6 years now, 15 years now, nothing of such has happened. Why did they tell me that thing if they knew they did not hear God well? They heard God well. The, rev the word that came is true. But until you are responsible enough to engage into um, dimensions of prayer by engaging the heavens, to the altar of prayer that which have been given to you as a prophecy might not come to pass, might tarry, and you will not see the fruit of it. Don't sit down, relax, and wait and say, oh, it has been said it will come to pass. Begin to wait you all by the altar of prayer. By the altar of prayer. Anytime you engage into prayer, a spiritual altar is created. And what it means that, Father, the situation around my life, the situation about my life, the situation I'm going through, I hand it over to you. At that point in time, it, the, the battle has been handed over to a higher power called God. And so now, it is between a higher spirit and a lesser spirit. The powers of darkness and the kingdom of God. And of course... Being a child of God, you have the backings of God and there is no power that can challenge God and will overcome God. Never. Until you are responsible to engage the heavens through the altar of prayer, you will not see the impossible become impossible. It takes responsible men and women through prayer. 
through the altar of prayer, engaging God, engaging the heavens to see the impossible becoming possible at your responsibility by you being responsible to pray enough. I speak a word into your life and over your life in the name of Jesus. Every difficult situation of your life, I command it to overturn right now. That sickness in your body, that spiritual attack they shot at you, I command it to be destroyed. Let that yoke be broken off you right now in the name of Jesus. You might be watching me on a YouTube. You might be watching me on a cross TV. You might be watching me on Facebook. You might be watching me from wherever you're watching me from. I stretch my hands to the camera and I speak to your life right now. Let the mighty hand of God locate you touch you and come and release and change and deliver you right now in the name of Jesus. I release you and I declare you from today. You are free in Jesus' mighty name. Give God a big amen. Hallelujah. Now, let me go through very quickly and I pray for you or we pray once again. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. The ten, Number one, about prayer. Prayer brings understanding. Prayer brings understanding. Daniel prayed. Daniel had an understanding. He prayed. He prayed. He prayed. Prayer brings proper understanding or prayer brings understanding. Number two, prayer gives you visions. You want to see visions? Be a prayerful person. Be a prayer warrior. You don't need to be a prayer in your church. Personally, be a, prayer, a prayerful person. Let it be part of your life. Prayer gives you visions. Number three, prayer releases angels. Even referring to the book of Acts chapter 12 verse 1, that was about when um, um, Peter was in prison, the Bible said that the, the church prayed and the same night an angel of the Lord was released. And that was how Peter had his deliverance and his divine release from the prisons. Hallelujah. Number three, prayer releases angels. So number four, it causes commotions in the camp of the enemy. Number four, thing about prayer. Prayer causes commotion or distractions in the camp of the enemy. Number five, prayer makes you see what ordinary men cannot see. Prayer works you, a uh, prayer makes you see what ordinary men cannot see. And number six, prayer is a force that moves the heavens and the earth. Prayer is a force that moves the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, number seven. Prayer is the womb that which gives birth to miracles. Prayer is the womb that gives birth to miracles. You want to see miracles? Be a prayerful person. Number eight. It takes prayer and sacrifices for prophecies to come to pass. It takes prayer and sacrifices for prophecies to come to pass. Hallelujah. And also number nine, prayer can break the flow of curses. Prayer can break the flow of yokes. Prayer can break the flow of setback. Prayer can break the flow of disappointment from your life and that situation you are going through. Prayer can break the flow of sickness from your life, from your body. Prayer can break the flow of whatever the enemy released against you. Prayer can do that. Prayer can do that. Pray. Pray. Again, I say pray in Jesus' name. Now, number nine, that is number nine. Number ten, prayer can make you become prophetic. Prayer makes you become prophetic. Very, very sharp and very, very prophetic. You want to be very prophetic? It makes your, your spiritual sensitivities very sharp. It gives you lesser discernment into things that people thought you'd never have an idea of, into things that the enemy uh, might, might, um, might have been hiding from you. Prayer makes you very, very prophetic. Prayer makes you very sensitive to spiritual things in, in the realm of the spirit. I want you to stretch your hands on the, um, on the screen um, with me right now as I stretch mine on you. In the name of Jesus, I release the grace and the unction to pray like never before into your life, into your spirit right now. In the name of Jesus, receive that anointing. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. By virtue of prayer tonight, I break that curse from your life. 
I command the root cause of that sickness in your body to wither, to be uprooted from you now. Be touched, be healed, and release the fresh flow of the power of God or the Spirit of God into your system right now. Be healed. I curse that cancer. I curse that tumor to disappear from you. I speak to that financial issue. Receive supernatural remembrance and favor for financial breakthroughs right now. In the name of Jesus, I release that job to come to you. I command that call to come through for you right now. That interview you went for, that you've been waiting for their call, I command that approval. I command it to come to you right now. In the name of Jesus, I speak to that ministry. Let it flourish right now in the name of Jesus. I command that darkness over you to break loose, to break you out in the name of Jesus. Be blessed, be favored in Jesus' name. Give God a big amen. God bless you so much, child of God. Once again, I want to thank God for allowing me to bring the word of God to you. This is covenant word of life. And I know as this covenant word of life has come to you, your life will never be the same. In case you want to talk to this man of God, you need prayer, you need counseling. I'm about to give you um, some numbers that you can call, a number that you can call, plus 233-249-66165, plus 233-249-66165. It's on Telegram, it's on WhatsApp. You can call me, whether um, you want to send a message, um, SMS, whatever, in, in, in which one of them that you want to call me to any one of them, Feel free to call, send messages, and we'll get back to you, reach back to you, and your life will not be the same. God bless you. Thank you for getting connected. See you some other time. Love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Covenant Sealed Grace Chapel, revealing Jesus, transforming lives. Thank you for watching. See you same time next week.